Hello and welcome to History Porium, the channel where we dive into history's least known stories and take a look at some truly fascinating characters. Our star today is Elizabeth Clark, the first woman to be persecuted as a witch by the infamous witch finder general Matthew Hopkins. Elizabeth was born in 1565 to an impoverished family with no land or money to their name. We know very little about Elizabeth until 1643 when she was aged 78 and living in Manningtree, England. One day, a local tailor, John Rivet, made an accusation of witchcraft against Elizabeth, setting off a chain of events that would result in the deaths of over a hundred women. In the winter of 1643, John's wife fell seriously ill. John accused Elizabeth of casting a wicked spell on his wife and causing her untimely demise. We don't know whether Elizabeth did curse his wife or even if she knew them. It's likely that John knew Elizabeth as an unusual and odd character, an unkept elderly woman with one leg. Whilst there was no actual evidence of any witchcraft, John Rivet's word was enough to whip up a frenzied lynch mob of locals. The enraged crowd hunted Elizabeth down and dragged her in front of her landowner, Sir Harbottle Grimston. Harbottle could not believe what he was hearing. Elizabeth simply had to be punished for being a total witch. At the same time in 1643, John Stern, a businessman and landowner, was visiting Manningtree. He heard all about the alleged case of witchcraft and his curiosity got the better of him. John started meeting with locals to learn more about the allegations. At one meeting, he bumped into a local chap called Matthew Hopkins who shared John's fascination in the case. Despite neither of them having any experience of law, witchcraft, or anything vaguely relevant, they were adamant they could solve this case. Somehow, Hopkins and Stern, along with a local woman, Mary Phillips, managed to convince the local authorities that they were capable of handling the investigation. The unlikely trio were now in charge, and together they became known as the Watchers. The Watchers' first job was to secure evidence, so they arrested Elizabeth and commenced a gruelling interrogation. Elizabeth's body was examined by a group of volunteer women to try and find unusual marks left by the devil, such as moles or birthmarks. Unsurprisingly, the Watchers found marks on her body, and so the investigation progressed to the next unsavoury stage. By 1643, physical torture was illegal in England. The Watchers knew that psychological torture was still fair game. They decided that Elizabeth had to be pushed to her mental limits to try and encourage the appearance of satanic creatures that aided Elizabeth in her evil doings, also known as familiars. The Watchers observed her intensely for three days, deliberately depriving her of any sleep. Ultimately, exhausted, hungry and cold, Elizabeth was at her wit's end. Unable to cope with the stress anymore, she broke down. Elizabeth began to tell the investigators everything she thought they wanted to hear to make the torture stop. According to Hopkins, she told them that she had carnal relations with a man who looked a bit like the devil many years before. She also detailed how she once killed a man and a horse. This level of detail was fantastic, but it wasn't good enough to secure a conviction. Hopkins and Stern were convinced that there was a larger network of witches operating in England that needed exterminating, and Elizabeth was just the tip of the iceberg. They continued to push Elizabeth for details of other witches that she knew. The psychological brutality continued. Breaking under the pressure, she provided names of various local women from the area. One of the women, Anne West, had met Elizabeth many years before and gave her money and food, having taken pity on her. In a state of confusion, Elizabeth further implicated Anne by informing them that Anne was the woman who introduced her to witchcraft in the first place. Elizabeth's allegations against Anne would be damning for the both of them. The Watchers now had proof that Elizabeth was a witch and that Anne was the head witch. Elizabeth didn't stop there though. Elizabeth provided detailed information about a series of familiars that included a white dog, a black imp, a demonic black rabbit, and a greyhound with long legs called Vinegar Tom. Rather frighteningly, Elizabeth recalled how Vinegar Tom also had the ability to turn into a four-year-old boy with no head. By now, the Watchers had all the evidence they needed. Elizabeth was tried at Chelmsford Assizes on the 17th of July, 1645. At the trial, Hopkins stated that during Elizabeth's observations, he witnessed her summoning unworldly creatures such as imps and unnatural hybrid animals. 
The judges heard confessions and testimonies which proved in their minds that Elizabeth was, indeed, a witch of epic proportions. Elizabeth provided a detailed family history and, curiously, didn't deny the accusations of witchcraft. It appears from what we know today that by the end of the interrogation, Elizabeth believed herself to be a witch. She told them how she loved her familiars and imps and described how they were used to commit random satanic acts on unsuspecting victims. The evidence was compelling enough to ensure her conviction. Elizabeth had effectively signed her own death warrant. She was found guilty and condemned to death. Within days, Elizabeth was hanged alongside the other women she had implicated, including the woman who once tried to help her, Anne West. The case against Elizabeth and its subsequent investigation was super important for Matthew Hopkins and John Stern. As a result of the success in Hopkins Stern's investigations into Elizabeth Clark, two magistrates in Manningtree authorised Stern to commence a hunt for witches. It was clear there was nobody more qualified for the job than Matthew Hopkins and John Stern. Many of the interrogation techniques they used against Elizabeth formed a template for their future investigations. Denying the victim of sleep for days on end became the de rigor method to draw confessions from their victims. The two men set off on a witch hunt across England that would become the stuff of legend. Travelling from town to town, they would seek out unusual, elderly, eccentric characters to persecute. Ultimately, their reign of terror eventually claimed the lives of over a hundred innocent people found guilty of witchcraft. Ironically, had Elizabeth not been accused of witchcraft, she would have died and faded into obscurity. Her involvement with the Watchers has ensured that she will forever have a home in the books of history. So what did you think about the allegations against Elizabeth Clark, her interrogation, and her subsequent trial? Let us know in the comments below. If you like this video, don't forget to click like and hit the subscribe button. Thanks for watching, see you next time.